GPTs are here. It might sound a little confusing. You're probably thinking, haven't GPTs been here for a while? Yes, but OpenAI slash ChatGPT's new feature, custom GPTs, the ability for anyone to know code to create GPTs. It's here, it's launched, it's live. Let's take a look. Before we do, if you don't know what this is, What's up? My name is Jordan Wilson. I'm the host of Everyday AI. We're a daily live stream podcast, free daily newsletter, helping everyday people like you and me learn and leverage AI. So let's leverage some AI. Some, some AI. This is our AI in five segment. So let's do a quick overview of these new features inside ChatGPT. So essentially what this is going to turn into is think of like the app store and how big that was for society, um, how big it was for Apple. That's what's going on with the GPTs, the ability to build these custom GPT assistants inside of ChatGPT. So you will need GPT Plus, which is $20 a month. I already have plenty of tutorials uh, on the channel that show you how to do that. So uh, all you're gonna do is, uh, well, well, actually let's do a quick uh, overview of the new interface as well. So uh, now the GPT-4 mode, uh, GPT-4 mode uh, has a lot of different things inside of it. It's Dolly browsing and uh, advanced data analysis inside there. And then you have your plugins mode. But uh, to access the custom GPTs, it is up here in the left-hand corner. So you can go to explore, all right? And then here's a couple test ones that I've used before. You can go down here to your recently uh, recently used, and then you can try these different ones by OpenAI. So let's go ahead and click create a GPT. So it's super simple. Uh, let's actually create a very easy one. So I'm just going to say, and you can do this all conversationally with no or little code. So I'm just going to say, make a learning assistant that helps uh, to help me learn AI. Um, and you'll see right here, the GPT builder is actually building this uh, kind of kind of live for me. Uh, so it's the whole thing you can do conversationally. Um, you know, you don't even have to, you know, do a lot of clicking, dragging, anything like that. Um, you know, I've spent maybe an hour or so so far, uh, you know, kind of playing around with this, but it's, it's pretty simple. Um, and, and like I said, you can interact and you can build these custom GPTs in the same way that you interact with custom uh, or with chat GPT. So you'll see here it says GPT behavior updated, and then it's asking me to uh, learn or to name my AI learning assistant. It's, it's suggesting a name. I'm going to say yes. So now what it's going to do, I believe, if it's going it's to use Dolly to uh, create a profile picture, which is pretty cool as well. So keep that in mind. Um, and I'll show you how to kind of configure this as we go along. But uh, when I showed you that uh, the mode selection, uh, your GPT very easily is going to have access to all of those modes. The default GPT-4, um, the uh, Dolly 3 advanced data analysis as well. So it's saying, here's the profile picture. It represents AI learning. So it's explaining why. And I'm going to say, sure. So I'm going to say, perfect. I'm going to say, let's customize. All right. It's already asking me to do this. So I'm going to say, uh, it's saying, let's refine the this AI scholars and goals. What specific topics uh, in AI do you want to focus on? For instance, are you more interested in machine learning, neural networks, AI ethics, or something else? So what I'm going to tell it is this. I'm going to say, I'm going to use AI scholar to um, every day chat with with and learn the latest news so let's make sure browse with Bing is enabled okay you see it's actually building it pretty quickly um, so I'm gonna give it some more kind of custom instructions and then I'm gonna jump into the configure uh, section here pretty quick as well so let's give that just a second and have it uh, kind of go through the the process of updating itself All right, and it says behavior updated. And I'm gonna say, uh, let's have Scholar AI focus on being friendly and breaking down 
complex topics in an easy to understand format, keep responses somewhat short and succinct, yeah. engaging and factual. So one thing I've noticed so far in creating a couple bots, the responses are always super long, like, I don't know, a couple hundred words, which I don't necessarily want. I want my AI scholar to be very succinct. Um, so as this is happening, it's updating. Let's go ahead and look at the options and configure. So as you kind of go back and forth, these instructions are going to fill themselves out, but you can always come in here and add um, you, you'll see it just updated right there as I had it on the screen. So you can always come in here and add or delete, modify this uh, instructions. Here, the conversation starters. These are what is going to greet you when you or someone else opens your uh, bot that you use for the first time. So these, uh, if you're used to the normal chat GBT, they just introduced these a couple of months ago, so you can do anything. Um, and then knowledge. So. Let's go ahead. I have a, a document here called Jordan's Take on AI, right? I just threw a bunch of uh, newsletters that I've written, uh, posts that I've written on LinkedIn, things like that, that just express my view towards AI. So ChatGPT or this AI scholar bot now knows what I know, and it kind of will know how I like to receive information, some of my takes on things, uh, stuff like that. Uh, also, a couple other, let's go over a couple more advanced things. Uh, you can go into actions, and this is where you can uh, use some open AI schema. Uh, you can, uh, by default, uh, you can import weather data, uh, some other things. I don't really need any of those things uh, right now, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Don't need it. Uh, you can also uh, pull something in from an open AI profile or just create your own. So let's go back. Let's do uh, a couple other, and you can add uh, capabilities here. So I have web browsing, I have Dolly, and I have code interpreter, which is essentially uh, advanced, similar to advanced data analysis. So uh, let's finish this up. And I'm going to say it's asking, should it ask for clarification or make an educated guess based on context? I'm going to say uh, educated guess. All right. So we're almost done. I know we're, this is a little longer than five minutes. It's not going to be too much longer. Uh, we're getting here pretty, uh, pretty close. So then I'm going to say this. Um, I'm going to say, uh, always, uh, when answering questions, always first use browse with Bing and search, um, and query for answers on the internet from October 2023 or November 2023 and use that as context. So I'm just sending that in. And then I'm also going to say, please analyze the, uh, what do we call it? That was the, here we go, the Jordan's take on AI. So I'm going to say, please analyze the Jordan's take on AI. PDF in your knowledge base. I'm going to say, please emulate this style for your responses. Also use some of this as your knowledge base as well when teaching the user about AI. All right, that's enough of you watching me type. Let's get this thing finished up and let's give it a preview. So it is searching the knowledge. This is probably gonna take a little bit after it searches the knowledge, then it needs to analyze the knowledge, which uh, it's actually, since this just came out uh, for the most part for people like 36 hours ago, that part goes uh, a little slow. So it, it says it's encountering an error. Um, I'm going to say just please try one more time. Please try one more time to access the PDF in your knowledge base. Wait for this to be done here. 
I didn't want to hit pause on this. So just as a reminder, I hope this is helpful. If it is, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to also go to youreverydayai.com. Sign up for the free daily newsletter. We put it out every weekday, Monday through Friday. Uh, all right. So let's let's see if we can quickly wrap this thing up. So I'm going to say, please try one more time to access the PDF in your knowledge base. This is working fine yesterday, but obviously, um, you know, this is getting slammed right now. Uh, so I did put the PDF in here. So it should be uh, reading it fine. It's not a huge file. Let's see. All right. So no, no worries. It's, uh, it's not doing very well uh, right now. I was having some other issues uh, this morning when um, working with files in the knowledge. But normally, don't worry, normally that works fine. Again, it's just getting, uh, getting a little overloaded right now. So let's go ahead. Uh, it's almost done here. I can't save it yet. So I'm going to say, let's save and try this out. And we'll show you how it works. And we'll give it a test too. So as you can see, the GPT Builder is updating GPT. And then pretty soon here, I should be able to save this and test it out. It's taking its sweet time today, but there are so many uh, capabilities and features and functionality that you can do inside here. Uh, there's a lot of uh, excitement and buzz around uh, the custom GPTs for good reason. So we should be good now. It says AI Scholar is now ready for you to try out. So let's go ahead. We click save. I'm going to say, uh, let's see here. All right. So I can't make this public yet because I haven't updated the privacy policy. So I'm going to go only me. That's fine. I'm going to click save. And then boom, we're in. There it is, AI Scholar. So you can either uh, remove it from there or have it be always there. So let's give this a try. So I'm going to say, what has happened recently with OpenAI? Any news? So it should, according to directions, use Browse with Bing to search articles from October 2023, November 2023. Uh, so presumably that is what it's doing now. There we go. So again, it's following my instructions. So it's looking for OpenAI news uh, from 2023. So now it's visiting, as I can see on the screen here, it's visiting these, uh, these different articles. And if I know this correctly, it's going to give me somewhat short and succinct answers uh, and a laid back conversational style to help me learn AI. So let's see how it does. Here we go. It's getting stuff from this week, which is great um, because there's actually been multiple rounds of announcements with uh, with OpenAI or different leaks, different features that were coming out. So we got all the high level stuff. Look at this. This is pretty good. So there's GPT-4 Turbo. There's custom GPT creation, which is what we're doing right now. This is kind of meta, right? Uh, the GPT store. Yep. Here we go. The assistance API. It's getting it all. Uh, so it's doing exactly what we said. And you can see why you might want something like this, right? Because using browser with Bing, not the biggest fan of it, but when you can give it directions like, hey, only uh, only look at November 2023 as an example. So then you know it's always up to date when you can teach it how to respond, when you can share a knowledge base with it, which again, that'll be working later. Not sure why it's not working now, but there you go. There you see it. It's giving me exactly what I want to know in the way. And then once I update the private, uh, privacy policy, I can share this with others as well. And then as you see here, uh, see right here, it does go uh, to the left-hand side on your news. So I hope that was helpful. And I hope to see you back for another AI in 5. Go sign up for the newsletter and subscribe as well. We'll see you.